In this video, we're going to go over old school germanium fuzz pedal schematics and look at how they're powered. One of the questions I've seen in the comments is, I have this germanium fuzz pedal and when it is by itself, it works fine, but if I put it with others, it doesn't work. Or another that I've seen is, I have this PMP germanium fuzz, but I have some NPN germanium transistors. How do I make this work? So here we have the DIY guitar pedals HydraFuzz. I'll put a link to this PCB project in the description below. This pedal is based around the Tone Bender Mark III, also known as the Three Knob Tone Bender, and it uses three germanium transistors to create its fuzz driven sound. The first stage uses the first two transistors as a Darlington pair, which then drives this third transistor, followed by a tone stack, and then it leaves out the volume. So back in the 60s when these pedals were made, NPN germanium transistors already existed, but the manufacturing processes used to make them were not that great. When PMP germanium transistors were created, the process of manufacturing them was a bit easier and therefore cheaper, so ultimately this is what we see in a lot of these fuzz pedals at that time. Powering these pedals were typically done via a 9 volt battery, but the portion that you would normally see on the circuit as positive would have got the negative terminal of the battery, and the negative side would have got the positive terminal of the battery. At the time, this wasn't a huge problem because this may be your only effect pedal in your signal chain, or if there was something else, it was likely powered the same way. But what if you had a newer pedal, like a delay, that you wanted to add to your signal chain? Well, it would work as expected and everything will be fine and the signal will be delayed fuzz heaven. No, Babu, that was all sarcasm. Yes! All of it! So no, that's not going to work. Uh, what is needed and what is included on the HydraFuzz is an added circuit called a voltage inverter. Using an IC, such as the TC1044S charge pump, we can configure to flip the polarity of the power, uh, giving the PMP germanium fuzz pedal a common ground which is what is necessary if you want your old PMP fuzz pedals to play well with your others. As the schematic shows, nothing changed in the schematic of the pedal itself, but as of the polarity... Reverse it. Reverse what? Reverse the polarity! Now we can plug our battery in normally, or give it wall power in a more familiar way. So, now that you know how this works, you get the clever idea to use some germanium MPN transistors instead, and forego the voltage inverter entirely. But as you build the pedal, you try it, and it isn't working correctly, so you begin to feel like this. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. I have no freaking idea what I'm doing. So here we have the HydraFuzz built up as an NPN germanium build. But to make this work, we need to mind a few things. In this case, we're using 2N1101 NPN germanium transistors. Two of them are low leakage of under 30 microamps, but have a gain of 60 and the third has a leakage around 190 microamps, but a gain of 90. Because the first half of the circuit is a Darlington pair, we'll put the two low leakage transistors there because that leakage gets amplified in that Darlington pair, and that'll leave the higher gain, higher leakage one here at the end. Now, on the PCB, I'll still place the transistors the same way, making sure the emitter pin is where the emitter pin goes, and the base pin where the base pin goes, etc. However, things that we'll need to have flipped on the PCB uh, will be the in-circuit diode and any polarized capacitors like this guy right here and this guy right here. Uh, so with the capacitors, make sure that the positive lead is going into the negative hole on the PCB and do the same thing with the diode, making sure the cathode goes in the anode and the anode goes in the cathode hole. Uh, doing this will make the pedal an NPN fuzz but with the germanium characteristics in mind. So, can we go one step further and make this a silicon MPN transistor fuzz? Well, sure, but it'll require a bit of modding. In this example, we use the NPN silicon transistor 2N3903, which is the lower gain version of the 2N3904. Uh, even with the lower gain though, this is still way higher than most germanium transistors, and so, in this case, that's why we had to add this R12 emitter resistor to tame some of that gain down a bit. Also, because this is a silicon transistor, we don't have the current leakage issues like the germanium ones have. And so, we needed to add this feedback resistor, which we use a trim pot for, and a Miller capacitor 
to stabilize this transistor a bit, make sure nothing like oscillation occurs. You may also notice that R9, which was over here in the tone stack earlier, has been removed because we don't need the leakage prevention anymore. And lastly, we changed the diode from a germanium one to a silicon one just to keep that all silicon motif on there for good measure. So this should give you a nice all silicon fuzz. Hopefully this helps in understanding what is needed to be done when taking old germanium transistor pedal schematics and applying different transistor types to them. And that's it for this video. If you like these kind of videos, press that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. If you have any questions, don't be afraid to post them in the comments below. And also, let us know what your favorite germanium-driven pedals are. We're curious to know what you folks play. If you'd like to support us, please visit our site, which is www.diyguitarpedals.com.au, and check out our parts, kits, and PCBs, such as the HydroFuzz used in this video, as that will really help us out. Anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.